Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a study of Skytoss. Well, that is Zerg fighting against it. And I know a lot of people have been like, ah! Me too. The Turtle Skytoss play is a whole bunch of Void Rays, a bunch of bases, and a bunch of static defense, and it's very passive, aside from the Void Rays going to kill your hive or whatever their nasty plan is. And I wanted to go over this game in particular. I already watched this game on my own time just kind of for my own study, perusal, and entertainment. And to give you a little bit of backstory here with this match, the Protoss player here, Nice, is a usual suspect for the ESL Americas Open. And this player has knocked me out of this cup, like, I don't know, four or five times in best of threes. So there's, there's kind of a feeling of this series that I watched of Rogue versus Nice, where say I'm like a, a middle school American football player and Nice is on the varsity team or something, or he's on the junior varsity team in high school and he's just like pushing me around and stuff and it's really easy for him to defeat me because he's on a, a higher level of play. So I've consistently lost to Nice. I haven't beaten him before. But over here... <laughs> We have the best football player in the world, Zerg. Who's gonna... Who's gonna go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Nice. And... Let's just see what happens. I was really excited to see... What does Rogue do against a Protoss who really likes spamming Void Rays? Let's just take Rogue's vision here. Let's change the color. Someone redeemed pink. I don't like that. Okay. He goes 16 pool. And this is the build that I started experimenting with this week, really. After seeing Serral do it, Rainer do it, Rogue does it. It's basically a way where you have a similar economic setback to getting your hatch blocked, but you still get to take your natural at the natural spot, which is really nice. It's sort of saying, okay, I recognize that we are now living in a probe block meta of Zerg versus Protoss, and... In my games in GM, it's probably greater than 85% of the time they block your base with their probe timing. So the 16 pull opening means you get those lings out on the map, which leverages aggression and applies pressure. You get to take your base at the place that you want. And you still get your queens out, and it ends up turning into a normal macro game after this. So it's not a cheese. It's not a really heavy commitment, but it gives you a lot of stability in the early game. So I'm looking forward to trying out this build more. 16 pool into a 17 hatch. And he just kind of chased the probe away and then sent the lings back home. Nope, he's actually got one ling that's going forward. You see that one? This ling is going around and looking by the third base. He gets a creep tumor at the natural with his second energy with the first queen. The second queen spawns in the main and injects right away. He got his third base up and he's droning. All drones. Queen is at the front. The thing that's really scary about this from the Protoss perspective is he doesn't really know if Rogue is about to cheese the shit out of him. He did send the probe back and he saw this, so I guess he knows he has some time. So that was a good scout with the probe. Now he's got two adepts, but he's worried, right? He's got to look around for, maybe there's a Ling Bane all in coming. Maybe there's a Roach Ling. He knows there's a gas in the main. This gas could be for some Ling heavy attack. But because Rogue went pool first, he doesn't feel confident or comfortable to send his adepts out which is fantastic. Rogue's bases are so safe. Okay, there's a Void Ray coming up. He sees it with the first Overlord. Gets another Queen of the Third, and he's still droning up. You see right now he just, he has an even worker count with Nice, but he should pass him here with this round of Larva. First Void Ray is out, and he sends the Lings in right at four minutes. Four minutes is a really important time. I learned this just from my own games when I was losing some 
against Protoss. This is around the time when Warpgate research is finishing up. And if they're going to go for the double Stargate Void Ray build, they'll oftentimes get an upgrade off of this after. So you can look for some uh, pretty nice tells of Sky Toss right after the four minute mark. You can just check and look at the gateways and see if Warpgate research is done because it'll turn into a warp gate. And then if the cyber core is blinking again, that's a plus one air weapons upgrade. So he's droning up here. Some low GM people will over defend thinking it's a 12 pool too. That's true. I have done the 16 pool opening and people will do the 12 pool defense procedure. They'll chrono out two zealots. It's amazing, <laughs> which puts you really ahead. And they can't really send two zealots at you and deal legit damage because you can just see it and then make a couple more links and use your queens. So that's great if that happens. If the Protoss scouts your 16 pool and they respond like it's 12 pool. So he's still droning up here. Notice he has three queens on the left and three queens on the right and one in the main. So his inject up time is perfect. It's perfect. And he has anti-air defense on both sides of his territory. So now he's creeping out. Creep, creep, creep. Roach Warren, Lair, Inject. Inject up time is still perfect. He's gonna go for a fourth base now. I can just put this up. Fourth base. This, this right here. When I saw that, when I'm watching this replay on my own, that's like a Obi-Wan Kenobi just chopped Darth Maul in half kind of a thing. How many times have you had your fourth base killed or canceled by a Void Ray like that? Rogue, four queens at the fourth base. The Void Ray shoots it as soon as it starts, and he shoots the Void Ray immediately and kills it. What time was this in the game, just for our knowledge? A little bit after 5.30? You love to see shit like this, dude. As a Zerg, this is what you browse when you're like, your faith in humanity has been shaken up a little bit because some people did some despicable things and you're just not sure or whatever. And you're like, you know, I need to pick me up. And you see this and you're like, oh God, here we go again. But it's Rogue, fam. Rogue is the destroyer of Protoss. And he just took tempo in the matchup now. There was nothing really huge that happened before this in terms of major damage that was dealt, but Void Rays are expensive. And you can think about the Void Ray count as it snowballs to a really high number. They can kill a hatch or a lair really fast with the turbo beam, but he just minused one Void Ray. So he subtracted future DPS that would be applied to his hive by securing that Void Ray kill early on and he just gave himself a ton of space on the map. Because now Nice has to think, shit, shit, I need to make sure I'm not gonna die to a timing. So he has to play defensive with these now. So that was actually a huge play. And it was a play that was enabled by him having the four queens at the fourth base. So it wasn't really like he did a particularly fancy micro move. We can just look at this again. He didn't do fancy micro where he's like, selecting something in some crazy way or whatever, you can kind of just scoot the queens in and A move them. But it's about having the queens here. That's the brilliance of this, is he has creep that's already advancing at this location, and he has the four queens at the ready with three transfuses. And the queen with the least energy is in the front. Where are the mistakes in this guy's play? Hello, Blizzard Trifix Balance. We're watching a Zerg demolish Protoss right now. We don't need to have a balance discussion. We're focusing on skill. Thank you. Rogue has it. Balance this. Need to nerf the queens again. Amazing. You'll love to see it. This space is getting droned up now. 
Oracle's looking around. He's getting roach speed. The roach speed pickup here, I would call a responsibility investment. Same thing with the roach warren. Sometimes when I see a void ray opening, I think to myself, hey, I'll skip, I'll skip roaches because he's going void rays. And then I die to some silly zealot timing. So the, the roach warren here, he's not committed to making roaches. It's mainly just so he doesn't die to any silly gateway timings. That could happen off the back of a couple void rays. Because the power of Protoss right now against Zerg is that if they get the first couple void rays, they can defend their third base really easily against a whole number of Zerg timings. So it's super safe. But it doesn't mean the Protoss has to stay air for the rest of the game. They could just have a few void rays and then they could switch into Twilight get their charge, get some Archons, or get Storm or something. They could pivot into different things. So him scouting right now is really crucial to see, okay, it is air. He just saw the second Stargate. There's more Void Rays on the way. There's also a Fleet Beacon there. He's still got his Inject up time. He's getting a Spire here. Notice there's no Hydra Den, and there's no Baneling Nest. He does have a Macro Hatch in the main. And the Macro Hatch... The macro hatch is such a mint, it's such a minty thing to have in your zerg play. Because it gives you more larva. And this is the thing that I feel like we've almost, uh, we hamstrung ourselves as a community of zergs who feel like, Well, just have better injects, you don't need a macro hatch. Whoever said that a long time ago and whoever has been like trying to push that, it's been collectively holding us back. Just slap down a goddamn macro hatch. Rogue is putting down one macro hatch. I've been watching Dark's games, and he does he does double macro hatch. He just takes that that kind of commentary that we had of just inject better forehead, and he just slaps down a second macro hatch. He doesn't give a fuck. So, if you're a Zerg out there and you're wondering should I or should I not make a macro hatch, make two and expand. Okay, so he's got 89 drones. He has 11 lings. He's spreading the creep. He's injecting the bases. And he just made a round of spores. And now he's making another round of spores. And now he's making another round of spores. We're going to notice a theme here in his play. Creep, 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 creep. Disruptors. Dude, if I can bed to you for a little bit, how many... Heckin' times have I been super ahead, I have 200 supply, I have 2-2 two, two Queen Hydra, and I go for a push, and then there are a couple disruptors, and they go bop, bop, and they kill all my shit. That's happened to me many times. The 2-2 two, two Queen Hydra is really nice if they go Void Ray into Carrier, but if they go Void Ray into Disruptor into Carrier, the disruptors can really throw a wrench into that whole progression and plan. They can deal a ton of damage. Queens are not very microbial at all against disruptor shots. Even on creep, it's pretty tough to dodge them. So what is Rogue gonna do here? The void rays go into the main base. But he's got corruptors here. And he's got queens and plenty of transfuse. And the void rays have to leave. Rogue has defended his main base. He's getting a second Spire. He made five Infestors. Still up at 90 workers. And this is a pretty long game, so we don't need to see every single detail and decision. But broad strokes wise, he's been mostly passive. He's not taking huge trades. He's not hit a timing. He's been entrenching himself on his side of the map in a way that Nice cannot go and kill him. He is going for the invincibility lies in the defense, and he's going for more of a slow command of the map. So he's pretty much agreed to split map, you could say. And this might be a player choice, like he's playing against Nice and he knows that Nice spams Void Rays, so he's doing this. This could also be a map choice, because Romanticide is probably the best map for Protoss to do this. It's just super easy for them to take that fourth base. 
that there are rocks that are protecting it that make you going for a timing not really very practical because if you attack the rocks before you try to hit that base they can attack you during that time so yeah it's a if you want to veto a map as zerg this would be it but rogue's playing on it anyway because he's the boss Turtle Zerg, kinda. I would call it split map, because I don't think that Rogue would choose to turtle of his own volition here. He can do a lot of attacks and kill Protoss, but because Nice is going for the most turtley Protoss style, he's not gonna attack into that. Because Nice has invested basically everything that he has into defense. Two disruptors, nine void rays, five carriers. He has no capacity to go for gateway timings. What tech does he even have? Let's go to the structures tab. He has Robobe, so he can make the disruptors. He has Twilight Council. He has one Forge, one Robo, four Stargates. And he only has six gateways. So he can't really hit any, any scary gateway timings at all. He is all about turtling on these bases and spamming cannons. So 13 cannons, 8 shield batteries, sitting at home. Has anyone here played against this kind of strategy from Protoss? I certainly have. It's a fairly frustrating one to face. Because there are a lot of different armies that you can throw at this. And most of them will die. If you send a Queen Hydra push... They shoot the disruptor shots and they kill half your shit and you die. You could cut, try to grab stuff with vipers. Which he's got a couple vipers here. And he also made a few broods. Let's look at the units tab here just to track the compositions. So the worker count is fairly similar. 10 corruptors, 8 brood lords, 9 queens. And now he's moving up his spore defense. So he's basically just kind of blocking off this side of the map and saying, okay, this side of the map is clearly mine. Relative to how I've played this situation, he's being more careful with his spores and his spore placement. Stuff that I would try to do is like build the spores right here, build them really far forward, and a lot of times they just fly up and they kill them as you're trying to set it up. But he made these pretty deep in his territory and he only moved them up a bit. Like he's not trying to aggressively run up and set up something and attack now. He's just saying, okay, now I've claimed another like piece of the pie. I think a way that you could consider split map and how it works in 1v1, it's kind of like the map is a piece of pizza. No, no, the map is a pizza. And over the course of the game, each base you could say is a slice of the pizza. And if you want to play split map effectively, especially as a Zerg, but really this applies to either. You want to be making better use of the pieces that you have. So you get some slices of pizza that are really easy to grab. Like Protoss gets their fourth piece of pizza kind of for free. But at the end of it, you want to make sure that you had at least one more piece of pizza than your opponent. In this case, that would be one more base. So he's claimed the left side of the map for himself pretty well. These middle bases are up for grabs. So just taking a big picture snapshot, this is clearly Protoss, this is Protoss, this is Protoss, that's three, four, five, and then I'm guessing he's going to take this one. Yep. This is his sixth piece of pizza. How many does Rogue have? One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's six versus six. Rogue's sixth piece of pizza is a little bit earlier on, which is cool. Then you also want to think about how many calories do I get from this slice of pizza? Because you're also trying to convert the pizza that you have, the bases that you have, into value, which can trade efficiently against the opponent. So what do you do against this army? Look at this. Let's talk about this for a second. He's got Overseer, Corruptor, and Viper all so tightly stacked that even though they're high Templar here, how do you feedback the Vipers? Honestly, that's what the, the Overseer cover is about. 
and he just pulls the mothership and then kills it. Brutal. He's adding more spores. Still has 87 workers. Making some more creep up there after the army left and rotated down. Notice that he's just keeping the infestors at home. The six infester is basically like an overextension punishment team, is what it looks like to me here. He's not like running into the Protoss' bases with them and trying to get sick fungals and like get on top of the army. He's letting the Protoss army move around wherever it wants to mid-map. But he's saying, as soon as you get to my spore wall, I'm going to be abducting some expensive units. And if you really commit, I'm going to fungal you. He's getting more energy on this. Spreading more creep. We can 2x this. He's breaking the rocks with Broodlords. More creep. Okay. Big scary Protoss army is here. He gets a fungal. Abducts a carrier. And one thing that you can consider with how this this match is set up now is the spore wall is a way where you can be killing interceptors anytime the Protoss commits into it. And that's going to be eating away at the total minerals that the Protoss has been able to gather so far. Protoss has a lot here. If you look at the banks, it's 4.8 mineral, 4k gas for Protoss, and Rogue has less. So how does he win this game? If the banks are similar and the base count is similar, how do you win? Because you could say that he's been playing in a robust and solid way so far, but you still have to win. How does he win? This Overseer count, though. 13 Overseers. Sending Changelings into the enemy army consistently. 26 Corruptors now, 3 Vipers, 9 Queens, 79 Drones. Units lost tab. Oh! He's being more efficient than Protoss. That's unusual. Usually Zerg is the inefficient one. Crashing against the rocks of the opponent. Let me turn this volume down. We don't need to hear the alerts constantly. Okay, that should be better. He's spreading creep. He's just sharking around ready to grab stuff if the Protoss commits, but he's not chasing. Not chasing, spreading creep. Massing spores. When is he going to take the number seven piece of pizza? Is he going to get another mothership? <laughs> another mothership kill. And a carrier kill. And an oracle kill. Units lost tab. He's up by 3.4 thousand roughly. Both players are maxed out. He's moving the spore up. So he's contesting the seventh piece of pizza. Base number seven. Boom, boom. Abducts carriers, kills two of them. This is awesome. Transferring stuff. Making more spores. We're 20 minutes in, and nobody's really committed into the other player yet. It's just been nice clearing creep, going up to an area, getting some units abducted and killed, and then he flies away. What is the overseer count up to now? 15 overseers, 27 corruptors, 4 vipers. And he's producing corruptors and spores and taking a base. I want to watch this unit's lost tab. Take note here as well, he did go down in drones. This is important because if you're thinking about the overall active forces that you have, any drones that you have aren't going to count toward this. So drones in your 200 supply make your army weaker. 
because they take up space where you could have more corruptors or broodlords or whatever. So here, he's just making more stuff into spores when his bank is high. His bank is already high, so now he can cut down on his worker count. For most of the game, he was above 80 workers. So this is like a 20 minute pivot that he's making. 20 minutes or so into the game. Now he's going down in workers and he's taking his seventh base forward with the rich Vespine base. Massing a bunch of spores up here, moving some other spores up here. Another thing that's cool to see here too is I would think with my, the way that I've played this, you would move these to here. But he just leaves them. He's like, those are spores. They're protecting a mined out base. But I'm just gonna leave them there and I'm gonna add more spores in front of it. Okay. He's just converting the map into spores. He's all right, you're on romanticide. Great turtle map. You have this many bases. He's like, huh, that's this many spores. Okay, I would say this is the first committed engagement of the game. They're fighting at the spores for a decent amount of time. So let's just watch this and kind of see how it plays out. More of a regular speed. Creep, spores, broodlords pressuring there. So I guess you could say the first committed engagement occurred whenever the static defense gets close to each other. So when rogue static defense is close to the Protoss static defense, that's when you get some action. A committed fight, abducts a carrier, kills it. His infestors are kind of just sitting here. He did put a fungal on these. So he abducted a bunch of carriers, fungal on those again. This looks kind of gnarly. He just focused another Void Ray, focused a Void Ray, focused a Void Ray, killed it, focused one, killed it, killed a Void Ray. Now he's falling back to another Spore location. He's killing Void Rays instead of Carriers. This is counterintuitive. I haven't been doing this. Because if you look at the Corruptor, the damage of the Corruptor, they deal 17 damage, but 26 versus Massive. So my conventional wisdom was that, well, you get more DPS out of the Corruptors if they focus carriers. So if it's a Void Ray carrier, focus carriers. The difference is the Corruptors don't take as much damage from the carriers. So the Void Rays are actually a bigger threat to them than the carriers are. So he's focusing Void Rays instead of carriers. You focus down the unit, which is OP maybe. Yeah, and the, the spores do better against carriers than void race as well. That's what it feels like. Because you, you kind of want the carriers to continue to exist so that they bleed minerals into your spore wall. That might be another reason for it. If you let the carrier count continue, then whenever they attack you, you kill a bunch of interceptors, which is emptying out his half of the map, basically. There's no way he's going to be able to establish this base. I don't know if he just made those to delay the gas or something. But he's sending in some changelings. His army composition now is 42 corruptors. One viper. Does he have infestors still? He does not. So this is very heavy corruptor. And you would say that it's fairly important to note that he has a greater spire. This greater spire means that if there is some weird late game ground switch if they think that Zerg overcommits to air, you can just up your Broodlord count, and then you're safe. I have watched a few games. I think there was a a dark game way back in HOTS, or maybe early Legacy of the Void. I think it may have been early Legacy, where he just crushed this Skytoss army super hard, but he had like 35 Corruptors, and the Protoss just remaxed in Stalkers and killed him. And it was really sad to watch because he had more army value by a lot but Corruptors can't kill Stalkers. Get up. 
So now he finally moves that up. He's taking this new base. He's chilling. Nice's bases are mining out, and there's no good location for Nice to take a base. You can't take this until you clear all this. You can't take this. And if he does, like, say Nice pushes into this location to try to take this base, then Rogue can have his Corruptor Viper over these spores and just yoink a bunch of units into them. So he basically just closed off Nice's options. He's not going to kill him. He's not bashing into the wall. He's saying, I will slowly consume the map and you can try to attack me and take bad trades into me. He just killed 24 probes. I think Nice may have been doing Fist of Neeb. Yeah, let's look at this. What are you doing? Yep. So the reason he's doing this is what I mentioned earlier with you're trying to lower your supply and workers so you have more supply and army. So now he has 12 carriers, 11 void rays, and a mothership on a 39 probe economy. As a zerg, can you beat this? This army has killed many a zerg. I have died of this. But Rogue has 42 corruptors. And these corruptors have what upgrades? 3-3. Three, three. What's his spore count? Let's check it. Structures tab. 137 spores. That's crazy. What streamer is in Protoss OP? Abduct a mothership and make 134 spores. Abducting carriers. Well, all of his inner or his uh, infestors died, but he did get a couple fungals off. Now this looks gnarly, but if you zoom out, he's got <laughs> he's got spores all over the place. Look at this; it's complete, from up here, through here, down here, into here, and if you keep pushing further, there's even this guy here ready to go. And there's more back here. Shit, man. He's the boss. Sure, come on. Let's go. Go ahead, attack into the base. He's just chilling, waiting for the super beam of doom to end. Then he goes in. Kills a void ray. Kills a void ray. Kills a void ray. Void ray. Void ray kill. Void Ray kill. Another Void Ray kill. Another Void Ray kill. Yeah, he's just focusing the Void Rays. What is the Interceptor count now? There's only 10 Interceptors! Look at this crap. These are empty. They've got nothing. Oh my goodness. Units lost. He's still a little bit more efficient, but you could say for this last engagement... Protoss took a little bit more of an efficient trade than Zerg. But now he's making ground units. Which are weak. Especially since I don't think they're that upgraded. Oh no, he has 333. Nice. Respect. Blinks forward. But he can just add broods and he can fungal the stalkers if they overcommit. So as a Zerg here, with the setup that Rogue has, you're very happy to see stalkers. Stalker at this phase of the game is a garbage unit, especially when you can make 3-3 three, three broods with queen support and infestor support. Nice can't do anything. What can he do? Rogue even mixed in a couple ultras. Fungals this. Stalkers do focus down some broods. But that was an inefficient trade for the value of the stalkers versus what they killed. And Rogue does have two more pieces of the pie. Let's go back to the fun pizza analogy. Raise your pizza emotes in the chat. This pizza pizza, one, two, three, four, five, six for Protoss. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight to six. 
Rogue is up, enjoying more of this pizza and being more efficient as well at the same time. Why so many changelings? What are they for? This individual has, what, 12 hecking overseers. When you have 12 hecking overseers, you have a resource of changelings and you scout with them. See that? That's called leveraging your investment. The APM thing is also a good note here because it does control the vision of the opponent. We can just go back and watch nice, shoot those down. You do have to do something about them. So I think the, the changelings go in and he has to right click them. Let's see, through the eyes of a Protoss. Through the eyes of the Protons. Yeah, he's having to right click this stuff and he right clicks the stuff at the other base. He's wasting his opponent's time and attention with the changelings, which cost energy only. They don't cost map resource. So it's a really nice way to give your opponent homework. Look at this, he's making nice do homework. All right, what's your homework assignment? Right click 67 changelings. Oh, that doesn't sound fun. When he tries to go in for an attack here, he gets fungled, he gets parasitic bombed, he gets abducted. He still has his units, but the, the carriers don't have interceptors. Now he's sending in zealots, cause he's out of gas. He ran out of gas with the six base play at 30 minutes. That's the thing that I could write down. Six base. Runs out of gas. At 30 minute. And Rogue wins. Rogue wins a defensive game. A defensive split map. Units lost tab at the end here. He was way more efficient. What is this? 12,700-ish more resource, more efficient. 12.7K. That's a lot of money. He made him come at the spores because Nice had to do something. Like he couldn't go anywhere. He had to fight because he can't go here. You can't go here. You sure as hell can't go through this. Rogue just closed off the match to him. He said, Romanticide, it's a Protoss favored map, but I am the current resident of this location and um, you're getting less pieces of pizza than me. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you, Rogue, for showing us how to late game versus Sky Toss. Hope you found this useful. Conclusion, Spores. Tons of them. Spore, Corruptor, Viper, with some Broodlord to make sure they don't dive. I would say the Investor would be an advanced step. So if you're a newer player and you're like, I don't know if I can use Vipers and Queens and Spores and Corruptors and Investors, I would cut the Investor, honestly. And yeah, I would say that would probably be the fanciest step where it's good, like for him to go for that, definitely good, but it's also something that adds mechanical difficulty to using your own army. Another key tip here would be the overseer count. So his overseer count was very high, which act as feedback cover for the Vipers. And those overseers were also sending in the changelings consistently, which were just wasting his Protoss opponent's attention and time. Most Eoprotoss mix in some Tempest and Oracle to clear spores with battery backup. Yeah, the trouble there is getting your Tempest abducted. Tempests are kind of like paper mache units where they have almost no armor and they're pretty low DPS against Corruptors. So I would feel like Rogue would not care. If you add Tempest to that, the result would have been the same with his setup. Would Neural Parasites be more effective than Fungals? No, it's actually garbage <laughs> because you have to channel it, which means the Infestor can't move, which makes them the easiest target of the Protoss player's life. You could maybe do it if you know that you killed the Observers and the Oracle. So if you know you removed the stealth detection, 
Sure, that could be a super clutch play. Fantastic. Thank you for joining me in a study of Zerg versus late game Protoss.